Monday, everyone. So, uh, as Gil mentioned, I'm going to present to you the new project under the U54. Um, unlike the other projects, we haven't really started this, so I don't have any outcomes to present, but I'll talk a little bit about some of the results from our previous project in the U56. I'd also like to point out that um, the, the co-leader from Hawaii is Dr. Suzanne Murphy. She's here with us today. So, I've had a lot of people ask me, why are we doing this beetle nut study? So I decided maybe I'll talk a little bit about what we know about oral cancer and then what we know about beetle nut on a global scale. So to start off with the distribution, we know that um, oral cancer is the sixth leading cancer worldwide. It ranks in the top three cancers in places where there are beetle nut chewers. Um, and we also know from uh, reviewing from some of the results we got from our U56 study that the incidence rates vary in Micronesia. Um, our president earlier alluded to that when he talked about how there's variation in usage and how that may affect the um, variation in the incidence rates. So, for example, with the Chukis population, their um, incidence rates are less than five per 100,000 individuals. So, if you look at the Guam Tomorrow's and the Pompeians, it's less than 10 per 100,000 individuals. Um, if you look at the Guam Micronesians, Palauans, and RMI, um, they're more than 10 per 100,000, and then it's high on the Yaki's um, population. So some of the determinants we already know that are associated with oral cancer include tobacco, um, tobacco use, smoking, heavy alcohol use, HPV infection, history of oral cancer, um, diet, um, the lack of fruits and vegetables, because fruits and vegetables are protective against oral cancer. And also beetle nut was added to the list. And you can see the, the variation in the incidence rates uh, may, could possibly be explained by the variation in beetle nut use. And so from our U56, we were able to capture uh, different types of chewers according to different chewing patterns. And so that was the part of the whole planning of the U56. Hey, what do we know about beetle nut chewing on a global scale? There are about 6 million people worldwide who chew beetle nut. We don't really have any surveys to um, measure prevalence in many places. So this is just a rough estimate. We also know uh, from other literature that they're starting to see associations of beetle nut chewing with other chronic diseases. And based on our U56 studies, and this is coming out of the 2007 Guam BRFSS, we also saw some of those same associations so we saw an association with arthritis, with asthma, with cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and we also saw the strongest association with obesity with an odds ratio of 6.16. So our goal with this U54 study is to uh, reduce the burden of oral cancer and other chronic diseases that may be related to beetle nut chewing in Micronesia. Our project objectives is to develop and pilot test the methods for studying um, the association of beetle nut chewing with oral cancer and other chronic diseases in Micronesia. Um, these are some of our specific aims. Um, again, this is a pilot project, so this is um, pilot testing the methods to go out and do this on a larger scale. So for this pilot, we want to collect information on beetle nut use among 100 study participants, and we want to do this in both Guam and Saipan. And we also want to collect beetle nut history from family members. We want to perform oral examinations and biopsies as needed, and we are working with the, um, some of our dental staff, um, and that's why um, to solve one of the collaborators is the Guam Dental Society. Uh, we also want to be able to measure some of the health risks, which include obesity, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and unhealthy dietary practices. Um, and we want to examine some of the associations of the duration well, not only do we want to look at the components of the quid, we want to look at duration, the frequency, and the type of beetle nut used with oral precancers and health risks. Okay, so these are some of our planned activities. Again, we haven't started, but we do have, uh, for 2010, this year, we are setting up the logistics. We will be holding an oral exam workshop. We're collaborating with the World Health Organization. Um, a pre-cancer cancer specialist from the United Kingdom. He will be coming here at the end of May, first week of June. He's going to be training and calibrating some of our dental staff, and he's also going to be putting on a seminar to the Guam Dental Society. Um, and we also want to start our recruitment and data collection. Continue in 2011 with our recruitment data collection and hopefully start our analysis and to report in 2012. 